Good, good evening class. Uh, thank you for joining us again for another um, video, for another class that we can learn together. Um, today is a very special day. I have a puppet with me and um, we're going to see if maybe he can help us today with uh, some of the class. So I want to see if maybe he would say some words to us today. And what else? I guess he's shy to speak right now, but we'll we'll see if he can help us out maybe one other day. All right, he wants to leave now. <laughs> so thank you for joining me today with um the class that we have going on today. It's um the superiority of the Christian career, and um we're actually going to be on the last class of unit two which is uh christ superiority um, we're gonna be going on to unit three today last lost opportunities i'm sorry lost opportunities but that's next class um this class we're still gonna be focused on the christ superiority um we've done a lot of classes uh my brother dennis which has been a huge help um uh, I really appreciate everything he's doing, and may God bless his family, and uh, may God continue to use his life um, as we go through these classes, um, and it's just been a blessing to know um, so much about just Jesus Christ in general. Uh, sometimes when we're in church, sometimes when we're giving a class, sometimes we focus on maybe the apostles, maybe on what Moses did, stuff like stuff of that nature. But we've just been focused strictly on Jesus, and that has been something that has really, uh, hopefully has opened up your eyes a lot to, to know just a little bit more about what who Jesus actually was, what he did, what he stood for, why he's superior um, to everything else. And I hope that that really helped you guys a lot. It's, um, it's definitely helped me grow, and I mean... I'm the teacher, but that doesn't mean I know everything. Um, I am learning with you guys as well. Um, and so it's been a, just a blessing for me as well. And before we get into this class, um, as we do always, let's just go ahead and uh, and pray really quick. Ask God to, to open up our minds, open up our understanding, and uh, help us learn today. Thank you, God, for everything you've done for us today, God. Thank you for... Um, keeping us safe, God. Thank you for our good health, God, that everybody might have right now. Thank you for just everything that we've been able to learn together, God. I thank, I thank you, God, for each of these young souls that are watching right now. I thank you, God, even if there's somebody that might not be that young that might be watching right now, God. I thank you for their life. I thank you for their time. Please allow them, God, to learn something from you, God, that they may be able to feel your presence, God, that they may be able to feel your love, and that they may be able to fill their mind with knowledge of you, God, not with knowledge of, of trying to make money, of running a business, of, of anything else, God. Let, let them fill their mind with you, God, because if we fill our minds with you, God, there's no way that we can go wrong with that, God. You are the sureness, God, that we will always, God, be able to be um, in good cheer, God, because of you, God, and in peace, God. Uh, maybe with tribulations, maybe with problems, but always in peace with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, guys. So the superiority of the Christian career, the superiority of the Christian career is the, the title of the class today. Um, we're going to compare our Christian walking um, kind of like a race. Um, uh, there's a lot of a lot of references to following Christ, like being in a race. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and read the, the scriptures. Hopefully you have the book right there in front of you. And um, we're going to go ahead and start off here. It says here, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Remember what I said about a race? Here's a reference. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endure it, who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Not that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let as many as are mature have this mind, and if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. So the main idea today is participating in the Christian race as the most exciting, rewarding, and glorious experience there is. As we go through years in um, Christian ministry and the church and um, participating, whether you're in the music ministry or any other ministry, uh, you're going to start to realize that this is a journey. This is an experience. Um, this is not just something that we do on Sunday or Friday or Thursday or whatever other day that we might end up going to church. I know right now we're only going on Sunday because of the whole COVID situation. But you start to realize that this really is a journey. I have never gone through this with um, our church, what we're going through right now with um, the whole COVID situation. And the past challenges that we faced are also different than what we're going through right now. So I started realizing that this is a journey in itself. This is a journey that has different obstacles, different things that happen, and it's just going to continue being something different because we are walking through, we are in a race, we are kind of in, in an obstacle course with different challenges ahead of us. So this is a journey in itself. This isn't just a, a ritual. This isn't just something that we got to do because our parents did it. This this isn't nothing like that. This is really a journey with um, the church, with your, your brother in Christ with your sister in Christ and um, with our leaders right now, which are, uh, you know, some of the leaders, obviously. And then, um, of course, our pastors as well in, in the front end. So we are really in a race. We are really in, in an experience and a journey. And that should excite you. You know, it's not just a building that we go to and just sing songs. No, this is actually a journey. This is something that we're going through together. And I'm glad for you to be part of this journey with us as well. Goal number one, to know that we have been called to participate in the maximum career of life. That's number one. Number two, to understand that the Christian life requires effort and discipline. That is a huge truth right there. Number three, to overcome obstacles and win the race. So, our memory verse today do you know that those who run in a race all, all run, but one receives the prize? Only one receives the prize out of everybody that runs. Run in such a way that you may obtain it, that you may obtain that prize. Now, obviously, there's not going to be a, a number one, a number two when um, God comes back for us or if you happen to um, pass away into his presence. Obviously, there are just people that um, were able to see Christ once they passed on from this life. And also when God comes back, there's not going to be a number one prize, a number two prize, a number three prize. There's going to be none of that like, like it is here on earth on an actual race. But the prize is Christ himself to be able to reach his presence, to be able to reach paradise like that, um, like the, the thief that was on the cross with with Jesus and, and he said remember me once you have reached your kingdom and then God said today you will be with me 
in paradise. So that that thief, yeah, he was he was so close to just dying without um, Jesus Christ forgiving him, but he made it. He he actually um, recognized Jesus Christ as the Savior at the very last moment and was able to be saved through grace, not through laws because of what he did and what, how good he was. He was able to be saved through grace, and he won the race, but came close, and probably not good to be that close, but um, thank God that he was actually saved um, at that very last moment there. So, the writer exhorts us to believe in this class to, number one, to not neglect salvation. That part of what we read, he, he urged us to not neglect salvation. Number two, to seek and enter unto rest. To be able to, to stay calm through the obstacles. To be able to enter God's rest. Doesn't mean we're not going to have them, but we can have rest. We can have peace through tribulations. And we've been preaching a lot about this. I hope you guys have been listening. Um, number three, to retain the profession or the confession. To, to retain that, that you've accepted God in your life as your Savior. Number four, to approach confidently. We can't be shy about approaching approaching God, praying onto Him. We can't say, "Oh, I, I'm I've sinned so much, and, and and God doesn't want to hear from me anymore." We cannot believe that lie. Approach confidently because God loves us, and He will want to help you if you if you are willing to accept His help as well. <clears throat> Number five, to remain firm. You got to remain firm. You you, you can't just. Uh, Go, go to church on Sunday, ask God for forgiveness, um, come out motivated, and, and then you mess up again right on Monday. I mean, you've got to remain firm. I, and it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy, but I know it's di very difficult in this time where you can literally go online and find a million different ways of things that you shouldn't be watching. I mean, uh, by, by all means, I, I, I know it's hard in this generation uh, to keep uh, a mind filled with God when there's so much junk that you can just fill your mind up with, but it's definitely not impossible. So you have to, um, you have to be firm, remain firm. And number six, which is the last one, to per to participate in the Christian race. There are so many people out there that know about the race, that know that there's a heaven and hell, that know that 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 God's mercy is 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 everlasting. But that's it. They're not participating in the race. There are many people who have maybe signed up for the race, started maybe running a few miles, I guess you can say, and then stopped and, and never ran anymore. So we've got to continue. We've got to persevere. So make sure you're participating in the race and not just being an observer of the race. Now I'm going to go, go ahead and read you guys a, um, a story here about a guy who just did not give up on the race, even though all obstacles were against him. It's a marvelous story, so listen up. Derek Redman, a British athlete, was the favorite to win the 400-meter race at the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. He had trained his entire life for this event. However, disappointment occurred. 150 meters before the goal, he tore his tendon and collapsed to the track. Injuries were a constant in Derek's sports career. At Seoul in 1988, two minutes before the start, he had to withdraw. He also had to undergo surgery on five occasions, including an intervention for his Achilles tendon. He didn't give up. He showed up for the 1992 games with just four months of preparation, but once again he was injured and his career was finished. Despite his pain, he managed to get to his feet and limped on, continuing the race. Suddenly, a burly man broke through the crowd fighting the security guards and coming to his aid. It was his father. You don't have to, the son told him. You don't have to, well, that's what the father said. The son told him, yes, I have to. The father replied, let's finish this together. To a great ovation from the public, and unable to hide the immense pain, <clears throat> Derek, 
Derek and his father continued on to the goal. Derek didn't win, but he reached the goal with the help of his father. Likewise, God has come to our aid and support us until we finish the race. The Father has come to your aid to help you finish the race. Yes, it's not going to be easy. Yes, you're still going to have problems. Yes, people might still make fun of you. But however, I know that when, and I've experienced this before, guys. I know that when someone prays for, for, some, for, for help, for my situations, I feel that prayer. And I know it's not them praying, but I know it's the Father listening to the prayer and coming to my aid. And you guys, I know, must experience this. Maybe there's a test that was really hard in, in, in high school or middle school that, that you didn't feel confident about. But, but then you ask someone to pray for you. Maybe you even prayed yourself before you received the test. And then you started remembering the answers. Maybe, maybe this was one of the occasions. Um, I don't know. But I do know that if you haven't experienced this in your life, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, but what I do, what I can't tell you is that he is there to help you. I've experienced in my own life. I know this is real. I know this isn't fake. Maybe you're doing something wrong. I'm not too sure about that. But what I can't tell you is that it's real. The help is there. The father is there to help you. And I can, and I can tell you about so many experiences in my life that we can spend probably all night talking about it. And I know brother Dennis has experiences in his life. Um, hermano Panchito has his, um, pastor has his, so many of us have those experiences where we didn't know what to do. We were nervous about something. We were, uh, maybe even a little bit impatient about something else, but God helped us break through. God helped us finish the race the way that he wanted us to. And thank God for it. We praise him for him and we're thankful for him for the life that we have. Um, so number one, guys, the Christian life is a career. It's not it's just a ritual, like I said. It's a career. It's a race that we have to keep going forward. <clears throat> With a past dimension, the witnesses are those who have run the race before us. Remember how I said here in the beginning of the reading that there were witnesses? Those are the people that have set the example of this race before us. The examples that we have, such as Moses such as Abraham, such as Daniel, the prophet. I mean, there were so many people that kind of paved the way for us to show us what they did in difficult situations, what they did when maybe there wasn't a, an immediate answer around. Sometimes miracles occurred. Sometimes um, God gave them revelation through a word or, or, a, or a psalm, like the psalmist David. But... There are all these times that God actually intervened. Now, we've talked about it in the past that our ultimate model is Jesus Christ. But that doesn't mean we cannot use these other, um, these, these other great men of God as an example for us. Like Moses, Abraham, Daniel. Um, we can definitely use them as a stepping stone. We can definitely use them um, to know that when times are tough and maybe you're a leader at something, whether it's um, something in, in school or, or even a leader at church, or maybe you're a father now, who knows, whatever the case might be, you you always can go back to these people that were leaders, such as Moses, and many of them um, went and, and, and sought, they, they seek God in their times of need. And um, that's actually a great example that um, I was given. And now that I'm actually a father, um, I constantly seek God for answers when I just don't have an answer to on how to move forward. And that's something that I've learned uh, throughout my life. And I know you're going to learn it too. I mean, one of these days, uh, I'm not saying you're, you're going to be a father soon or anything like that. Hopefully one day, if, if, um, if that's what you want. Um, and if that's what God has planned for you, but Maybe you're going to be a leader at some point, um, whether it's something in school or whether it's something in the church. But um, definitely, you're going to be placed in a position where you might not have all the answers right away. But you can always seek someone that does have the answers, someone that is going to give you guidance. And that's Jesus Christ. That is God. And with a present dimension, now that was the past. That was people that said, 
sometimes some stepping stones, but now the present, the Christian life is being compared to a relay race here. So that means you grab one baton and you pass it to another. That's what um, the race is. So you, you go and you pass the baton to someone else. What does that mean? That means that you are participating in a race where those past um, those past um, examples, Abraham, Moses, such and such, so on and so forth, they have now passed the baton onto us now to continue the race. Now the race isn't over. God hasn't come back to to redeem the church, to pick up the church, and and and, and the second coming hasn't occurred yet because we're still here. But now they have given us the baton. They have given us uh, the, the task of spreading the message of Jesus Christ unto the world. Now, it's maybe a lot different now. We don't have to go on a, on a boat and, and, and go somewhere to, to preach. I mean, yeah, you can still do this. But um, as of right now, I'm speaking to, to you virtually through YouTube. Paul did not have this. He didn't have a computer or, or a phone or anything like that to communicate to his churches. He had to send letters. So now um, things have been changed. Now, now you can actually um, go on a, on a YouTube channel and, and watch someone preach. If you want to, once this is over, you can go ahead and watch 15 hours of, of sermons all up on YouTube you, you can literally fill yourself up with God through television, through your phone. I, I mean, things are very different now. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't like back then where people kind of had to uh, congregate and, and they had to kind of hide so nobody would see them. And, and they would have like kind of like secret signals, kind of like that fish that we have that uh, we've seen around. That was kind of their signal to signify that they were having service. Um, you know, that, that's what they went through back then. But now... In our time, now that we have been passed that baton to us, now we have testimony. Now we can preach about this. Now we can talk about it, even to people that have been that are probably going through persecution right now. So definitely, we have a present dimension of our Christian career, of our Christian race. The Christian is like a runner in a crowded stadium. As the crowd watches him accelerate, he has already won the crown. If you remain in Jesus Christ, the crown is yours for the taking. Just don't give up. Keep going forward. Uh, Number two, an obstacle race. So, having the right outfit, no one can reach the goal while carrying a heavy load. Guys, in this race, we make the mistake many times of carrying loads that we do not need to carry, of carrying things that God has maybe already forgiven us for, but we still feel bad about it. We don't feel like we still deserve to maybe be part of a congregation, We and we feel like maybe we don't deserve God's, um, God's forgiveness, and yeah, you're right. We don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I know that for sure. But we have to accept it because God has given it to us. We can't just say, no, I don't deserve it and I'm going to leave it there. That is the biggest mistake you can make. He paid a price. And even though we don't deserve it, he paid the price so we can actually accept it and receive it in our lives and let him guide us now. We have to actually take it. We can't just deny it. Because that's going to be an even bigger mistake to never accept God's uh, sacrifice and his forgiveness for your life. Uh, Many of us have to learn this. If we've made mistakes in the past, I've made mistakes too. Um, Many brothers have, have said that they've made mistakes as well. But we can always run for help. We can always run to the Father for his forgiveness and his guidance. So if any of you are struggling with this, I'm telling you, do not run with weight on you. Do not run feeling sorry for something that you might have done that happened five years ago. Or maybe it happened yesterday. But if you ask for forgiveness, if you've asked God to forgive, maybe a lie that you've told, maybe if you saw something that you shouldn't have seen, you 
took something that you shouldn't have taken, all you have to do is ask God for his forgiveness and be real about it. Don't just play with God and ask for forgiveness and then you're planning five days later to do it again. Definitely don't do that. But ask for forgiveness and make sure you can turn your life around. You can do it today. You don't have to wait till next month. It can be right now. So don't run with that weight on you. Maintaining the correct freedom. The Christian life involves a sustained effort to resist sin and the power of the Spirit of God. Guys, we have to resist sin. I said it earlier today in this, in this lesson that we're having. It is tough. It is very tough out there. You can literally uh, be watching um, the news on TV and, and out of nowhere pops a, a commercial for, for a movie that's rated R, a horror movie, or even a movie that has um, adult images that I'm not going to get into right now that you didn't even want to see. But if someone struggles watching this stuff and then it just comes on, it's kind of like you have to just resist and you have to, I don't know, change the channel, turn off the TV, uh, go do something else. I know it's I know it's hard. Sometimes you might be watching YouTube and then here comes an ad with something that 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 you didn't want to see, but there it is and, it's, and you're watching it. So, guys, there are many ways that the devil can just, just take us. Um, and maybe a, a really good friend that you have, um, his belief is something comp completely different than our belief. Um, and this is just many examples that I'm just coming out with to let you know that I know it. I get it. I know it's tough. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard to maybe be eating by yourself at work or in the cafeteria in school with no friends around and nobody around you. But guys, if you sacrifice today, if you do something that's uncomfortable today, that is what's going to go ahead and propel you forward in your future. So sacrifice today so that way in your future you can be thankful for what you've done. I can guarantee that a lot of you that... I don't know if an adult might be watching this, but if he is, maybe you've done mistakes in your past and you said, I wish my younger self would have said no, so today I can say yes. I wish I would have said no to to, to alcohol, to, to drugs maybe, so today I can be in good health and I can move forward with my life. So I know that, and I, I just want to say, guys, if you sacrifice today, I know your future will be better. I, I, and that's something that I'm certain about. Having the right attitude. If you have the right attitude, even in bad situations, things can go well for you. This is not about the patience that sits and accepts things. It is the determination that does not rush, but does not rest either. So you have to right, have the right attitude. You might be in a spot where you don't like being in right now. You might have a job that you don't like having right now. You might have a, a circumstantial um, a, a circumstantial event that you're going through that you do not want to go through. Maybe uh, your your license. Uh, you, maybe you didn't pass the test for your license. Maybe you didn't land that job that you really wanted. Maybe you're in debt with credit cards. I don't know. I don't know. You, there, there's a lot of things that might be going on in your life. And I'm sure you're you're thinking about it and you're like, man, I, I hate this. I don't I don't like it. It's th this is dumb. Why did I do this? Guys, having that type of attitude will make you stay in that spot that you don't like it even longer. I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that if you have a poor attitude towards something things are, years can go by and things are not going to change because you don't have the attitude to move forward. You've got to have the right attitude to make sure you go up against what happened, you fix a mistake that you might have done, or you, you move forward in your life. We all have to go through something that we don't like to be able to get to a, to a certain place where we feel a little bit better that we're, that we're there now. 
Um, for example, if you go and do something and you fail at it, you don't you don't do good. You you play basketball and, and, and you you scored two points. I don't know something like that, and, and you failed at it. So if you take that failure and you take the necessary steps to get better, to to improve, now you're actually taking the attitude to not just give up, but to actually move forward. You need to make those improvements in your life to be able to move forward, to be able to to say, you know what, I messed up in the first times and in and, and, and these couple of times, but I can move forward now because I've taken that challenge, I've taken the right attitude, and I know that I can come out of it. You got to have that attitude. You got to stay positive. Number three, uh, I'm sorry, the reflection on number two. We must abandon everything that holds us back, everything, and we will need the help of Christ to do it. We need Christ in our lives. That is number one. Uh, number three, a career with purpose. In the Christian life, there is a goal. So if you don't have a goal in your Christian career, in your Christian race, you need to go back and set goals. You cannot be running in a race just because. I I'm here... Just because I, I just want to, I just think I should be on in a, in a in a church on Sunday. That is not the right attitude to have. You've got to be able to set goals. You've got to know why am I doing this? Why am I coming to church? Am I coming here because I, I know that I have a problem with with an, an addiction, maybe, and I need help. I need help from Jesus to move forward then your goal is to break that addiction. Am I going to church because I know that I'm going to be going through a, a really hard time with letting go of friendships? Then your goal is to let go of these friendships that tie you down. It is to, to let go of things that you don't want to let go of. Am I... Can I not listen to... To worldly music, do I struggle with something like that? There has to be a goal for why you're going to church, why you're praying. Are you going through a difficult um, economic situation? Um, money's tight right now. Whatever the case might be, you have to know what your goal is. Why are you going to church? There has to be a reason. And the goal, the ultimate goal for every single one of us, this has to be in your mindset. Is Christ Himself reaching paradise, reaching heaven? Now that is a goal that must be in your mindset. There, may, it makes no sense for you to want to save the whole world and lose your soul, and at the end you go to hell. That, I mean, I mean that that, that makes no sense right there. You have got to have the goal to be able to be saved. Once you are saved. Once you feel Christ in your life, once you feel the, the, that love, that, that peace that you've never felt before in your life, that's how you're going to want to relay that message to everybody else. Because this is an experience that a lot of people don't think exists. They think it exists in, in, in addictions, in gambling, and fame, and money. They think all this stuff, but really, it's attainable through Christ himself. And once you feel that, once you feel Christ, once you know that you're saved, once you know that in the second coming you're going to be able to, 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 to go to heaven and, and to be able to call that your home, that is the ultimate goal. We all want to be able to be in paradise one day with our Father. And in the Christian life, we have a model. We have said this so many times. Look at Jesus. That kind of sums it all up. Look at Jesus. Look at the ultimate model. Look at the perfect role model. Don't look at Michael Jordan. Don't look at, at Kobe Bryant. Don't look at, at um, maybe uh, some famous singer. I don't, I, I don't know what's, what's hip and cool right now. I mean, I'm... <laughs> I'm not at that age anymore. But don't look at an athlete. Don't look at a, a Christian artist. Don't look at all this stuff. Look 
at Jesus, guys. And I know maybe you can't really learn about Jesus by following his Instagram. Or you can't learn about Jesus by following his tweets. I mean, yeah, I know that. That's not... That's many times how we learn about people. But we can learn through Christ just by reading the Word, guys. I mean... You, you have to just pick up the Bible, take 15 minutes, if, if that's what you can do, 15 minutes of your day out of all those hours that you use for everything else, and just read the Word. If you don't understand something, that's okay. I didn't understand a lot of things when I was your age and I was reading the Bible, but I read it and I retained it in my mind. And and before I knew it, there was a, a sermon that was talking about it, and it explained it for me, and I was able to understand that. And this is the way that you can find answers. And there's so many resources available to us nowadays that they did not have in the past. Back then, if you want to learn about something and learn what it meant, you probably have to go through an encyclopedia and a bunch, go through a bunch of books and actually learn what it was. It's not that way anymore. Now we have resources. We have things you can use to be able to learn and grow in the Word of God. The Apostle, Paul, the Apostle Paul ran in this way, certainly forgetting that, certainly forgetting what is left behind and extending myself to what is ahead. I press on to the goal, to the prize of the supreme call of God in Christ Jesus. He was pressing on to the goal. And when he was about to be executed he said i have fought the good fight he knew that he had ran the race and now his goal was waiting for him what a wonderful example from the apostle paul the christian life is a race that can be won or lost but it is the only way the only race in which all who arrive win like derek who did not win his competition but reached the goal despite his injury, when his father saw his determination to arrive and came to his aid, let us remember that we are not alone in this race. The Holy Spirit runs beside us, and there is an award for all who arrive. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being able to be here with us in this class. This is the, the very last class in Unit 2, Superiority of Christ. Let's go ahead and pray really quick and thank God for this unit and everything that we learned. Thank you, God, for everything that you have taught us. Thank you for everything, God, that we have gone through as a class, God. Thank you for everything that we have gone through as a church, God. Thank you for the race. Thank you for all the obstacles that we've also gone through because it has helped us become better. And thank you, God, because we now understand, God, that you are superior to everything. It's your covenant, God, your your priesthood, God, your, your your sacrifice, everything you did is so superior, God, to everything that we have experienced. We ask you, God, that we may continue our race, that we may continue our career. Let none of these young souls give up, God. Let me not give up as well, God. And let us all fight together. Let's all carry on, God, and be able to reach that goal that you have for us. And I ask, God, that you may keep each and, say, each and every single one of our students safe and everybody else out there, that nobody may be able to cash bad health, God, through, through COVID-19 that we're going through right now. Keep every single mother and father safe as well, every single brother or sister, God, that they may be able to go to school, God, with, with calmness in their heart, God, that they might not have to worry about um, the disease that's going on right now, God, and that... Everybody that has a job, that they may be able to go to work, God, calmly in peace, God. And also, God, everybody that that has to go to either a hospital or whatever it is, God, also, God, have peace in their heart and let them know, God, that you are with them. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, I know my puppet didn't really help us out today, but um, hopefully one day um, he'll be able to to actually talk a little bit. All right, you guys have a good night. Thank you.